Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Flycast Partners presentation. Thank you, Rich Longo, your host as always, and I want to thank you for joining us for our webcast on IT cost optimization. Today, our presenters will be Manya and John Callahan of SolarWinds, and I hope I've got Manya's name pronounced correctly. And uh, Manya is a product marketing manager internationally with years of experience with products in the technology space. She's been an instrumental in helping many organizations out there understand how different technological tools can help them create efficiencies, enable their teams, and help to cut costs and risk. John O'Callaghan has well over two decades in the technology space in various roles. John's ability to take complex technology solutions and create a more simplified message for better understanding has enabled numerous organizations globally to make educated decisions in enhancing their capabilities. He has a proven track record of taking projects from beginning to completion with great success. Before we get started, let me introduce Fly Flycast Partners. Flycast Partners offers best-in-class implementation services and training in IT service management, IT asset management, IT operations management, IT security, enterprise service management, and workload automation spaces, all using ITIL best practices. Our professional services team has well over 5,700 professional services engagements, both on-site and remote. As an organization and a company, Flycast Partners has just shy of 1,300 regular customers all throughout Canada and the United States. I encourage you to always reach out to us directly at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. Or visit our website and chat with one of our IT experts Monday through Friday, Eastern Time, 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. They're happy to get you white papers and data sheets and demos and answer questions that you may have about services and products, help you get training, help you get the L1 and L2 support that you may be looking for and anything else in between. And if that's not your thing, then simply email us at info at flycastpartners.com. I would like to encourage everyone to please type your questions during today's presentation in the question section of this presentation. We'll try and get as many of those questions answered during the time allocated throughout our presentation today. Now, without further delay, I'm gonna turn this discussion over to Manya and to John. Perfect, thank you very much, Rich, uh, for that wonderful introduction. Um, and Manya, glad to have you on board this evening with me, and thanks to everybody for joining us, we do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so um, I've actually got over three decades, unfortunately, Rich, <laughs> in, the, uh, in the IT industry. Um, I didn't want to age you too much, but there you start, go. I, there yeah, go. there you go. Okay. I, I, I started way back in 1988, yeah, back in the mainframe days. So I've seen kind of a little bit of the mainframe days with a company called ICL in the UK. Uh, moved from there to Dell Computers for a bit of time in sales, uh, moved into Fujitsu. But my longest stint was in uh, EMC Corporation running the um, executive briefing program for EMEA and APA. And I'm at Solomon's now for uh, just over three years and uh, spent uh, the first three years looking after product marketing uh, in the international markets and uh, recently moved into director of partner development um, as well. So uh, looking forward to kind of uh, working with you guys as we uh, go forward into 2021 as well. And Manny, do you want to give yourself a quick introduction there? Of course, it's hard to beat yours, John. But <laughs> so I'm, um, I'm actually a cultural scientist. So I come from a more uh, philanthropic uh, background and I grew up in the eastern part of Germany. So I've quite some interesting history uh, parts to tell if somebody ever wants to reach out to me. And um, somewhere in the 2000s, I got hooked on the IT industry and I started um, in a actually wedding bridal kind of startup situation, owned my own business, successfully sold it, and then got more and more into the IT world, started um, working on and selling um, huge e-commerce platforms on Magento, Type 3 stuff, then like slowly and steadily step more into IT security, um, kind of joined SolarWinds uh, almost three years ago, like I'm a little bit shorter in the game than John is, and um, was overseeing the IT security department in terms of our products and product marketing. And now I merged into the international product marketing position and that brings us together today for reducing the cost of IT operations management. 
Yeah, well, at the international team, definitely got an upgrade when the when you, when you went into that job. Um, okay, so let, let's get into the, uh, the the content of today. So today's session is about uh, reducing the cost of IT operations management, and we'll go through some uh, slides and have a, a bit of a conversation about this. Um, and towards the end of the session as well, uh, I'm more than happy to provide a demonstration of the SolarWinds uh, Orion platform as well. Just to show you, because we do talk a lot about consolidation and optimization, etc. But it's always good to see um, the the type of solutions that we can offer as well, um, briefly to give you an understanding of what it, what, it, what it looks like. Maybe there's some customers on today uh, from SolarWinds. Uh, thank you very much. If if you have our products, uh, we do appreciate your business. If you're new to SolarWinds, um, hopefully you, you'll get to learn uh, a bit about us uh, this evening. Um, okay, so let's move on to the uh, the, the first slide there, Rich. Okay, um, so listen, when we think around IT operations management uh, in SolarWinds, we have this term ITOM, uh, and it is an industry standard term. You would hear about it from the likes of Gartner and Forrester and these these analyst organizations who talk around ITOM as, a, as an industry component. Um, what we have done is kind of included six, uh, I suppose, pillars or categories within the ITOM framework that SolarWinds offers, uh, and they include um, application performance management, kind of at the top of the IT stack, um, and then underneath that, of course, we have our database performance management portfolio uh, to support the applications. Uh, after that, of course, you have your infrastructure management, your network management, and then we have IT security, uh, which Manu is heavily involved over the last three years, and also the uh, IT service management piece as well. So the one thing where we differ slightly from uh, the analysts is we've included our ITSM offering in our ITOM offering just to make it simpler for people to understand that framework. Um, so when we look at the challenges that people face uh, in IT management and IT operations management, you know the, the graphic here. Before we get into the, the benefits of consolidation, but if you look at the graphic on the left hand side, you know we have I suppose what really is a, is a simple picture of what in the real world is much more complex, right? So you have your IT stack, your network, your applications, your servers, your virtual machines, your operating systems, uh, your databases, your storage environments. You may have disaster recovery sites. You may have cloud environments, on-premise environments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and all of those little kind of colored boxes um, basically indicate, you know, a monitoring tool or a management tool or an analysis tool of some sort um, or a security tool as well um, or a service tool, for example. And if, you know, w w there's some data suggesting, suggesting that even for network management, um, enterprises who are large, um, you know, maybe 3,000 customers and above, for example, uh, may have anywhere between uh, 25 and, um, sorry, 8 and 25 uh, tools to monitor and manage their network environment. And that's just the network. So when you add on applications and databases and everything else, it can get quite complex. Um, now, as I said, when I joined the industry way back in 88, um, there, wasn't, there wasn't a huge amount of need for operations management uh, solutions because as I said, we had the big mainframe in the corner, as long as the lights were working on it and all the green screens were, were plugged in, uh, everything was hunky-dory. Um, but of course, uh, along comes Intel, along comes Dell Computers and Microsoft and these guys, and they create the distributed computing environment to serve client server environments. Uh, after that, of course, we had the introduction of the internet and uh, made access to computing across the globe ubiquitous for people. Um, then along comes VMware and they disrupt the whole kind of physical server market by creating virtual machines. Uh, we come, and then we move into the mobile technology and so on and so forth. So every trend in IT kind of adds more complexity in terms of the operational side of it. Um, and to the end user today, like you and me, um, obviously, it's it's easier for us to access our applications from our phones or tablets or laptops from any place in the world, be it at home uh, and so on. And I suppose, aren't we lucky when we think of the last 12 months in terms of the global pandemic that we have these technologies to allow us to continue uh, running uh, the vast majority of the businesses uh, out there? Obviously, certain industries have been hit hard with the pandemic and uh, hopefully uh, as we come through this in 2021, uh, everybody will get back to normal business uh, very, very soon. So our job and, you know, a flightcast job and all of us together um, in terms of trying to reduce complexity is to try to make things as simple as possible. And I would never stand in front of anybody and say that SolarWinds has one solution for everything um, and we're, we're going to get you down to one tool for everything. Um, that would not be very accurate. Um, but what we can do is we can certainly help you to consolidate uh, down to fewer numbers of products and tools that you need to monitor, analyze and manage uh, your environment. So when we think of consolidation, um, people think around licenses straight away. They say, "Oh yeah, I can. I've got, I've got ten tools. Um, you know, I can reduce that down to uh, one offering or two offerings from SolarWinds. Uh, I can consolidate my license pool." 
Um, if you're using subscription models as well, you could look to consolidate some of those. And of course, then when you do that, you also simplify your renewals environment and annual maintenance and that type of stuff. Or if you're uh, using sub subscription, uh, resubscribing into environments as well. Um, other benefits in consolidation include the support environments, training environments, uh, vendors and contracts. And of course, every accountant in the world must reduce the uh, the number of vendors and contracts that organizations are using. And Manu, I know you talk to customers on a very regular basis, so you probably hear about these things all the time, yeah? Absolutely, and one reason more for consolidation is just like that is more resource efficient. So your people don't have to look at 20 different things. They can focus on like one to two, three kind of institutions. And uh, this is bringing more time back to the really important things that they have to take care of. So that's one aspect that I like to keep you in mind as well. Absolutely. So let's move on to the second uh, reason, Rich, why what we can do in cost management, and that is automation. So consolidation is typically your first step. Uh, once you've consolidated, uh, you've simplified a little bit, uh, then you can consider uh, automation of processes and so on. Um, and this is key to kind of, if you take day-to-day -day activities, again, as Manya said, you want people in IT to spend their their time on kind of transformation programs, be that digital transformation or IT transformation projects. You don't want them spending time and money um, fixing problems or analyzing problems. Um, and other data suggests that up to 30% of an IT team's time is spent dealing with performance issues, uh, digital performance issues. The associated cost of that, um, on average, is actually about $2.5 million per organization. Now, very, very large organizations, of course, uh, will have bigger bills associated to you know, managing issues. Um, smaller companies in the commercial sector or the SMB sector um, will have much smaller ones, but the average is still coming in at about 2.5 million, uh, which is fairly significant. Um, so when we talk around kind of automation, we, we think around kind of can we automatically respond and fix issues that occur uh, maybe on a regular basis, and we don't want to take up IT teams' time on that. Um, so we have a, a nice word in there, anomaly detection as well, which we've been including um, in some of our products, and we will continue to uh, add more artificial intelligence and machine learning code into our systems. And I'll be able to demonstrate a little bit of that later on uh, in one of our database performance management uh, solutions. And Mania, from your background in security, uh, obviously you've got a lot of experience in how we can help with things like security rules and compliance as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, something that a lot of uh, people think that they can do when an audit is coming up or like, okay, uh, we're looking at the compliance space and we're like so, so good. But what we can do with a couple of tools is just uh, automate the uh, generation of reports so that they get automatically sent to the auditor internally or externally so that you're actually saving time by being proactive instead of reactive. So they don't have to call you up saying, hey, I need this in this report. Um, you can automatically create them and forward them because nobody really gets um, ever seen for doing a good job on on those things or you know, like to like roll this out automate this make this template based um so that we can cause less friction on that side yeah. and of course the the scariest sentence in it is that the auditor wants to see you right <laughs> yeah so we, we, you don't want to be in that situation <laughs> send him the report before he asks you that that's a good idea okay rich so we have a um, consolidation and automation uh moving into the third one we talk about optimization um, and of course optimization is really around cost avoidance um, so if you're thinking about you know procuring extra hardware because an application is running slowly or a database is running slowly or whatever the case might be or your network is um, you know we can help you to optimize the existing resources and understand why they may be running slowly uh, and help you to fix that before you go and spend money on additional uh, hardware and so on um, once again, in the demonstration later on, I will talk a little bit about a product called Virtualization Manager, um, because obviously the compute environment is one where we can optimize uh, on, a, on a, a very granular basis in terms of CPU utilization and memory utilization, storage, etc. Um, and the database is another key area, of course. You know, a lot of application challenges can come from the queries in, in databases taking their time, uh, and we have fantastic uh, solutions now uh, across all all the major databases, be it Oracle, be it Microsoft SQL, or some of the newer ones like MongoDB, Redis, et cetera, um, where we can help DBAs and system admins to really understand why a database uh, query uh, it might be taking uh, extended time uh, period to, to complete. And of course, DBAs also want to use those tools to have the proof of innocence that you know it's not the database, it's something else, go and, go and uh, find out if it's the server, 
or if it's the network or the application itself in terms of coding and so on. Okay, so we'll talk a bit about optimization in a little while. Um, number four then. Okay, so we talk about efficiencies and uh, I know Manny, this is one of your favorite uh, conversations, so I'll, I'll let you handle this one. So in terms of efficiency, it's really to streamline processes, to get faster on the things you're doing, to automate monitoring the analysis, all the alerts, bringing things together and really make it work for the administrators to reduce their time with the tool and uh, uh, like really bringing them um, so much more power by having everything handy and having like real organized dashboards, uh, reports that we can create automatically, present them to people. And um, in terms of efficiency, this is really what gives the uh, administrators or network admins, uh, the SecOps people, time to focus on the real important things uh, in terms of hybrid IT, bringing everything into the cloud, onboarding um, the staff members on things. So there's more important things than they should be doing um, just then looking at their monitoring tools. So we're trying to cut out the time that they might need in the meantime to really allow them to do the important stuff. Absolutely and if you add in uh, the, the ITSM piece of our ITAM uh, framework as well in terms of service desk which is a SaaS offering we've integrated that into our monitoring solutions as well so the Orion platform alerting engine for example uh, can send alerts as incidents into our own service desk as well as into other third-party products like ServiceNow. So um, I suppose my favorite words in this slide is the integrated closed loop so when you think about what we do, we help organizations to monitor essentially anything in their IT environment. Uh, we analyze the performance of that and the availability. If something breaches a threshold or goes into an anomalous state, we alert it. Uh, we can then send that alert into an incident management system so we can direct the, the incident to the correct team so they can respond. And obviously then we have our SLAs in terms of uh, service service agreements for response time and resolution times and report that back up to management and of course reset and off we go again. So continuous integrated closed loop is really what we're trying to achieve uh, to help with that uh, process efficiencies as well. Other kind of soft benefits you will see through here is things like common languages. So if you have uh, IT teams who are in silos, who may be using different tool sets that, that don't talk to each other, uh, maybe different dashboards, uh, different training, all that kind of stuff. Once you get onto the Orion platform in a consolidated environment, um, suddenly you have the server team, the network team, the database team, uh, the storage team, etc., all kind of um, looking at the same dashboards and working together using the same common language uh, formats as well. Okay, so let's move on to the next piece. Uh, so there are kind of four ways we can help with cost management. Um, so we've got three kind of ways that SolarWinds and our partners in, uh, work with, with customers. Um, and the first one of those, which we'll bring up now, is kind of fix a problem, right? So, and this is, if you're you're familiar with SolarWinds at all, we've been around for now just over uh, 20 years, uh, 21 years really, and uh, the majority of our customers um, over that time uh, would be in the administrator layer, right? So uh, the network admin, the system admin, the DBA, the storage admins, uh, and so on, application owners and so on. Um, and historically, uh, the way that we've engaged with customers and how our partners engage with customers is understanding that there is a specific problem that somebody's trying to fix or to get over. Um, so in this example here, we've got uh, an example of a, a DA or system admin who's got some database problems. Maybe they're not covering their uh, the, the uh, database instances adequately. Um, maybe they've got multi-vendor databases and they can't, they don't have a, a solution to cover all of them. Uh, maybe they've got a lot of database instances and they're only covering a percentage of them. Uh, or maybe they don't have a DBA on their staff at all. It might be a system admin who's the uh, accidental DBA, as they're called, uh, because they were never formally trained in database systems, but they're asked by the management to, to manage them. Um, so it could be a problem where a database is you know, not performing well, but they can't understand why. Um, so they contact uh, SolarWinds uh, or Flightcast and they say, hey guys, you know, can you help us with this problem? And based on the database instance um, and the type of database, there's a solution that we have from a product perspective to go and, and fix that. In this case, we're showing the database performance analyzer tool, uh, which is designed for multi-vendor database environments, uh, covering you know, Oracle Enterprise, Oracle Standard, Microsoft SQL, MySQL, uh, Azure SQL database, Postgres, DB2, MariaDB, AuroraDB, you, you name it, it's in there. 
Um, so if you've got those databases or you've got multi-vendor environments and you want a single tool to monitor um, all of those instances, then Database Performance Analyzer can be deployed in hours. DBAs around the world love this product because it really helps them in their day-to-day -day job and really quickly understanding why a database may not be performing. So that's typically how we'll uh, engage with organizations at the fixer problem level. It could be a network problem, it could be an application problem, performance problem, it could be the database one as we've seen, it could be a storage, it could be compute, whatever. Um, but once we get, uh, you know, working with an organization and um, provide them with a solution for a problem, we can move into the kind of the next phase of, uh, I suppose, what we call the ITOM maturity model um, and helping you go from, you know, just a single solution in one area and really talk around the consolidation and integration opportunity that you have um, with the uh, Orion platform. Um, and when I'm at a trade show, meeting customers or meeting partners. Um, I actually spend quite a lot of time uh, looking at the menu with them. And uh, again, I'll show you that towards uh, the end of this session as well. So the Orion platform uh, is where we plug in a lot of our products um, and they all integrate seamlessly together. Um, and that would be from the network management, the database, the applications, log management, uh, and analysis, storage, uh, web performance monitoring, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So again, when I get to the demo, I'll bring you through uh, all of the products uh, quickly in terms of and how they integrate together. Uh, one thing we have on the platform as well is what we call platform features and one of those is called App Stack, um, which is the application stack and that basically uh, can sh show us all the elements that are supporting a specific application and it can identify where um, a performance issue uh, may be. Um, and Manny, I know you do a lot of demos of this uh, platform as well, um, so any, any favorite products you've got in, in that platform? Well, considering my rather compliance background is definitely NCM and SCM uh, with like network and server compliance um, stories behind them. So that's my favorites. But other than that, I would definitely go for the uh, virtualization manager. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's my virtualization manager, I must admit, is my favorite. Uh, maybe that's my background in EMC and VMware. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so we, we typically when we're talking about integration projects, um, you know, the conversation uh, might go up to the IT manager, go to the IT director level. Um, and then once we kind of help organizations to do the integration and, you know, deploy their Orion platform and have multiple products integrated together, then we can move to the, the third kind of level of conversation, which is really around developing a strategy for ITOM over a period of time. So this is when the conversation is going to roll up into, you know, the CTO uh, or the CIO level, um, because, you know, it's a bigger conversation, it's a, a, a bigger discussion in relation to maybe a three-year program to kind of um, get IT operations management simplified, integrated, consolidated, and efficient, all the things we've talked about already. So there's a kind of a, a simple mission statement that you might see around an ITOM strategy. So within a certain period of time, that could be 12 months, two years, three years, five years, whatever it suits your organization, to develop the integrated scalable solution for hybrid IT operations. And of course, you see here we have hybrid uh, because not only can we help monitor and manage on-premise environments, but we also now can obviously monitor and manage um, both cloud environments uh, as well, whether it's applications in the cloud, in SaaS environments, uh, whether it's database in the cloud, in kind of platform as a service environments, or whether it's infrastructure as a service solutions as well. Um, so whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, that can be covered. And of course, uh, the, the customer benefits or the customer outcomes, um, they've got to drive down costs, you've got to reduce risk to the business and drive a faster organization as well with agility and so on. Um, as you can see on the right-hand side here, this is the ITOM framework um, that we have. Uh, we introduced this about, um, probably about 16, 17 months ago, uh, started last year basically, was um, to kind of simplify the story of SolarWinds to uh, our, our user community and also to the partner community as well. And as you can see there, the six pillars of the ITOM framework um, that we have on offer to uh, the world of IT operations. Okay, so uh, moving into the next section, um, we'll talk around kind of um, building a business case. Um, so obviously the last 12 months has been a challenge for a lot of organizations around the world. Uh, budgets have been cut. So there's even a greater emphasis on, you know, how can you save me money, time and effort um, in terms of uh, IT operations. So again, we talked earlier on about the average time it takes uh, an IT team to manage environments uh, or to manage performance issues and the associated cost of that. Um, so, you know, sometimes we can, um, you know, talk to management and say, hey, by introducing a consolidated uh, integrated solution, uh, we can actually uh, save uh, a bunch of money in relation to the amount of time that we might spend fixing performance issues as we go forward in time. 
Um, so, you know, the pandemic has kind of uh, focused the attention of people on what they're spending. Uh, certain industries, of course, have flourished uh, in the pandemic. Um, you know, I'm sure we all would have liked to have shares in Palo Alto at the start of the event um, because the VPN technologies, of course, have taken off with everybody working from home. Um, uh, but of course, a lot of organizations have suffered very badly at the same time. You know, the aviation industry, the hospitality industry have all suffered. So, um, you know, anything we can do to help you uh, save costs, uh, we would certainly um, talk about that to help you get uh, budget approval for investment in these consolidated type solutions. Okay, next slide there, Rich. And of course, what's important is, you know, everybody can say, we can help you reduce your costs, uh, you know, help you get budget, but um, we need some proof points as well. So um, last year we did a survey of uh, 357 SolarWinds customers, uh, just asking them about the, the business outcomes that they're seeing and the business benefits they're seeing uh, from using SolarWinds technology. Um, and as I said earlier on, you know, we're, we're not going to wave a magic wand and provide a solution that eliminates all incidents. <laughs> Uh, that would be a crazy statement to make. But as you can see, we've got some significant uh, returns from investments for organizations. So reducing average reduction uh, in incidents by 22%. Uh, so basically uh, one in five incidents can be eliminated or just over it uh, using SolarWinds technology. And on top of that, we have also a 23% average reduction in the mean time to resolution. So we're dealing with fewer incidents and we can help reduce uh, the time it takes to complete and fix those issues uh, as well. So that's a kind of a double whammy benefit uh, straight away. Um, another key thing is what we, you know, the CX metrics or the, the customer experience metrics are really important as well. Um, and basically these would be more internal um, uh, metrics. Um, if it's, you know, if somebody measuring the IT team, for example, and the performance of the IT team in response to fixing issues like my email is slow or the database is slow or whatever. Uh, but it could also just as well be um, end user customers uh, seeing an improvement on the availability of a service, for example, uh, over time. So a 19% uh, improvement on uh, customer experience uh, as well. Um, we can also save actual time in terms of number of hours saved per week with automation, which we mentioned earlier on. And we can, uh, on average, in the cases of the ones we spoke to, uh, eliminate an average of three tools um, as well from the environment. So if somebody's running five or six tools prior to SolarWinds, we can get that down to three or four uh, after that um, and help them save money in that regard and do the consolidation of the licenses and all that kind of stuff that we talked about earlier on. Okay, next slide, Rich. Okay, so there's a couple of opportunities to kind of formulate business goals um, and looking to reduce costs. And I suppose any any business case or any, any project is gonna require um, uh, a business case to be to be created, right? Um, so in this case, uh, an example of a problem, uh, company's main service is suffering too many outages, uh, it's affecting customers and revenue, and so on. Um, this is an environment where there was uh, lots of multiple, you know, lots of tools that weren't integrated. Uh, root cause issue uh, was actually taking a long time to find and therefore extending the outage, extending the problem. Um, and there was, of course, uh, gaps in monitoring. So not everything was being monitored, whether it was servers or applications or databases, um, and basically outages were occurring um, without being without being seen. So the idea here is that we can help to kind of do a gap analysis, uh, understand where the gaps are, maybe look at this from a, mature, a monitoring maturity environment as well. You know, is it a basic environment? Do you want to move into an advanced environment? Um, and then of course, you got to look at the, the benefits and the savings that accrue from looking at that solution as well. Um, so we list out the benefits and you can see some of the examples there of what the, some of the elements that you can put in here. Um, and that would be things like the consolidation uh, of the cost of maintenance renewals or subscriptions, uh, the amount of labor cost to maintain solutions being replaced. So we can have people working on um, you know, business transformation programs as opposed to having to uh, fix issues. Um, the cost of downtime, of course, is huge. So if an application fails for an hour in certain industries, um, the implications can be uh, quite staggering. Uh, you can imagine if Amazon.com failed for three hours or four hours, uh, the impact that might have on their um, bookings and so on. Um, cost of downtime uh, in incidents, of course, and so on, right? So you list out all of the potential issues uh, arising from an outage. Um, and then of course you can add in the cost savings that you would have as well in terms of consolidation of licenses, maintenance, et cetera. Uh, and then you can total up your, your net benefit as well. 
So of course we can help uh, and our partners can help you guys to work through that type of business case uh, to put forward to management uh, for approval uh, to move forward and if, you know to get that return uh, that we want you to see. Okay, next slide, Rich. Okay, so this is another example um, where a company's application for generating leads isn't performing. Um, so the, basically, the, they're missing the opportunity to generate more leads in the time um, available to it. Um, and the development and database team is spending a lot of time reacting to performance issues as well. So this is where uh, an organization focused in on uh, an application performance management and database performance management solution. Um, and that's a good combination because obviously applications uh, typically will rely on a database of some type, be that a traditional relational database or one of the newer kind of NoSQL uh, type databases that are out there. And uh, one of the products we have actually can help you uh, help DBAs to actually look at the coding as well um, within within the actual application. So it will monitor uh, if there's inefficient code in the application as well as the, the database queries as well. So again, you can do the same process. This is just an example, and it was um, uh, this. I know this customer actually, and it was uh, quite a significant investment from them, um, and the benefits they've seen uh, in terms of creating uh, their leads and so on is has been quite significant. Okay, moving on, Rich. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at some of the some examples of uh, customer wins um, in vertical spaces, financial services, healthcare, etc. Uh, Manny, do you want to take one of these? Absolutely, John. It's a pleasure. So right now, looking at a uh, financial companies, financial services, and of course, they are challenged by a lot of audits, in-house monitoring, and um, like having a lot of um, solutions, most likely not uh, the latest ones that they have integrated. So it's all organically grown. And um, our solution and approach was to go in with um, an Orion approach, to really give them a more holistic solution that um, then proves on uh, like a higher availability uh, 360 degree view into their system with uh, products like network performance monitor, server application monitor, a virtualization manager and database performance analyzer. And what we like to do in SolarWinds is we call our products as what they do. So whenever we say monitoring, it's really a monitoring product. And um, if it includes the um, manager piece, it's really then managing within the system. And um, so this company is quite big with uh, 4,000 employees, five campuses. Um, and so that was mostly a challenge for them, but we kind of like brought them back to an enhanced agility with an increased amount of um, automation and the customer was saying they saved like over 720 hours in each um like driving operational efficiency so um i think that's a good sign especially bfsi can be a bit um audit heavy so making them happy is showing us that there is a good way to make the financial sector a bit more efficient and uh, up to speed in our days Cool stuff, and that was a US company, I believe. Um, and Rich, if you just pop down to the one in APJ, uh, just jump on more. Next one, next slide again. Yeah, so there, so private sector bank in APJ, and um, I actually visited this uh, organization um, early, uh, sorry, late in 2019 um, in uh, in Mumbai, and uh, met met the guys uh, who were running uh, the SolarWind Solutions in there. It was, uh, it's a huge organization, 5,000 branches in India. 11 international offices um, and you know there are challenges you can see here enhancing alert configuration and management for backup recovery and data loss prevention automating network analytics reporting to improving uh, accuracy and ensuring timely business reporting so they're they they had configuration challenges they had reporting challenges analytics uh, that type of stuff so uh, they've been a big customer of solvents for many years so they've uh, introduced a network performance monitor into their environment they added in NetFlow Traffic Analyzer to provide um, an analysis not just of the network performance and the data and the network um, systems, but also the traffic on the database as well, so they could maximize that um, uh, that bandwidth that they have in the organization. But a big one for them was Network Configuration Manager, which helped them to manage that configuration challenge that was listed earlier on. Um, they also had obviously a lot of network points and a lot of IP addresses, so IP Address Manager helped them to automate. The, the management of the IP addresses and help them to do capacity planning uh, for that space as well. 
Um, as, a, as a big organization, of course, they required um, additional polling engines and uh, they, were, they were scaling their environment up to quite a lot of elements uh, and pushing the Orion platform uh, as well. And uh, they've been uh, a fantastic customer of Solons for, for many years now. Um, so you can see, I like the quote they have there, and this is the chap that I met, the Vice President of IT Infrastructure Services. Uh, a month and a half's worth of research went into zeroing in on a network management tool and no other solution available matched up to the features that Solvents has to offer. So uh, very, very generous quotation, which we obviously appreciate uh, as an organization. Um, and I suppose one thing I'd say when we do talk to partners and customers around the world, um, a lot of the times we, we kind of ask them the question, so why do you work with Solvents? Why do you buy Solvents solutions? And the top two answers I always get are product quality and product range. So, um, you know, we've got this very loyal uh, customer base. Um, and actually, we've got a very large community as well called THWAC uh, online community, where there's over 175,000 people now registered on that community where they interact, um, asking questions, getting information and all that kind of good stuff on our community as well. OK, so uh, maybe uh, I know we're kind of uh, we've got about 10 more minutes left on the call. so. Um, will we jump into the demo, Rich? It might make sense to do that right now. We absolutely can. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give you control, John. And okay. There you go. Perfect. And I will select the screen. Do it properly this time. <laughs> screen to monitor too. There we go. So, uh, are you seeing a screen? We are seeing SolarWinds, yes. You're seeing SolarWinds. Welcome to the SolarWinds online demo. Cool. Okay. Um, so one thing we have as well, um, which is uh, a bit of a differentiator in the marketplace, is we have our online demo, which is available to anybody. So anybody in this call, if you go and do a search in Google for SolarWinds Orion demo, it'll bring you to this page. Um, as you can see, the username and password are already pre-populated, so you can just log in and have a look around uh, and play with the uh, play with the products. Um, you can't break it. I've tried many times and failed. Um, what you can see as well. On the top left is we have um, some more demos. So if you want to play around with other ones like Enterprise Operations Console, which is uh, our manager of managers. So the Orion platform can have up to 100 instances globally. Um, and each instance can support up to a million network elements. Okay, So in theory, we can support up to 100 million network elements uh, in a global scenario. Um, I don't think we've ever reached that number. We probably never even got close to it. But um, the, the theoretical limit is, is that uh, from an Orion instance perspective. Um, An Enterprise Operations Console sits on top of the Orion instances and provides information on the health and availability of those Orion instances themselves. Uh, we will jump into Database Performance Analyzer in a few minutes just to show you some of that anomaly detection. Um, and uh, one of uh, Mania's favorite products, of course, uh, we've got Security Event Manager in here as well, which allows us to um, collect logs uh, from many, many devices. This is one of the benefits of this actually is that it's licensed on node basis. So a lot of the log management products out there and um, they charge on uh, log volume and all that kind of stuff right so we don't do that we we uh, price this up on a node basis so if you were collecting 25 petabytes of logs from 100 devices we only charge for the 100 devices uh, on this one um, so we'll have a look at database performance analyzer in a minute uh, but in the meantime let's kick into the solowinds online demo for orion platform and show you uh, what you know, what it would look like uh, if you invested and in kind of put the product into your environment. As I said earlier on, when I'm when I'm at a trade show, or whatever, I just make the screen a little bit bigger here and zoom in a bit. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time just on the the menu system. So up here we have the uh, dashboard, and you know you can see each of these tabs here. Um, you know, so each of these tabs is basically one product. Okay, so if you have uh, the network tab here, this is network performance monitor. This is NetFlow Traffic Analyzer, Network Configuration Manager, Log Analyzer, Server and Application Monitor, etc. So if somebody purchases a Network Performance Monitor, they will have the Home tab and the Network tab. If they add more products, it will grow over time. Uh, and you can build out your, uh, um, your Orion instance uh, by adding these products over time. So this is where you can help to consolidate, streamline, and make efficient and have the single pane of glass into your overall uh, IT operations management. I mentioned earlier on um, one of the features of the platform, which is called AppStack. Um, the tab here is called Environment, and I'm just going to jump into that for one second uh, and show you how we can view uh, all of the elements that are supporting um, applications and groups of people and environments and so on. So here we can see we can have groups, so we can uh, combine applications and infrastructure and locations into specific groups. So we've got our Amazon AMI service here, for example. 
We've got our West data center here, and of course, all of these elements and um, nodes are part of that uh, data center. We also have containers, so we support uh, Kubernetes uh, containers uh, quite well in these environments. Uh, Docker is in here as well. Um, we've got chassis with the, the uh, Cisco UCS chassis. We've got our applications, so, and if you hover over any element here, it'll kind of tell you what it is. So this is a Microsoft SQL Server database application. We've got the database instances, which is being populated from DPA. We've got our transactions from our web performance monitor. We've got the steps in the web transactions. We've got uh, physical and uh, physical servers. Uh, we've got virtual hosts, virtual clusters, virtual data centers, and down in here to data stores, volumes, LUNs, NAS volumes, and storage arrays, and so on. So you can see all the elements within an environment are, are highlighted. If you want to get the names, you can just show names. It'll tell you uh, everything to make it easier to uh, to run around and check something. And let's say you wanted to drill down as a as a, an application owner into this Microsoft Exchange environment, for example. So if I click on the Microsoft Exchange, it will now go off and basically eliminate everything that's not associated to this Microsoft Exchange environment. And now I can spotlight that. I go up and hit the spotlight button. And now I can see my Microsoft Exchange environments. I can see that all of them are sitting on physical machines. There's no storage arrays. So basically, this all of them I exchange are sitting on servers which are you know uh, requiring the internal storage in the server to provide uh, the services out to my exchange environment so that's a nice simple example of how we can zoom in to uh, an environment and understand uh, you know the how it's structured and so on um, just jumping back into the flagship product i suppose we would call network performance uh, monitor and just to show you one of the key features in here as well which is called netpath um, and this is where we can see end-to-end -end network connectivity from essentially any point to any other point. Um, so if you've got SaaS applications such as Office 365, or if you're running Azure Cloud, or if you've got internal applications, or you want to look from New York to Sydney or whatever uh, on your environments, then you can use your um, NetPath service to see, to see how, how well the network is performing between those points. So let's jump into the Office 365 environment. As you, as you can see, we have four probes from two from the East Coast in the United States, two from the West Coast. Uh, let's jump from Los Angeles uh, and have a look at our connectivity from Los Angeles into our Office 365 environment in Microsoft. So here's the probe on the left-hand side. This is for the Los Angeles uh, probe, uh, which is a Windows server. Uh, you can see we send a data packet across this uh, routing, and all of these elements here are part of the internal network, so the network administrator is going to be responsible for the performance of all of these. Uh, once it gets to here, it now exits the customer and goes into, uh, in this case, uh, Telegram Holdings. Um, and now we go into Charter Communications, which is a service provider. Uh, and we can also see the routings within their network as well. Uh, once we get into Microsoft over here, we can now drill down into the Microsoft routings as well and see um, that, luckily enough, our Office 365 from Los Angeles to, uh, to our Microsoft 365 instances, everything is green, everything's working fine. We have a history here of the availability and the latency as well. So that's a good example of uh, uh, one that's working really well. Let's have a look at another one, which maybe there's some issues and uh, we want to see how an integrated product like uh, Network Configuration Manager works to understand where the problem might be. So in this case, I'm going to jump down into our NetSuite environment and we've got a, a probe here from Bruno in Czech Republic. And uh, we'll click on that one. And this is a smaller link because there's not as many elements in it. Here's the probe again, here's the routings, and here's where the problem is. It's a Cisco 7206 VXR, and the NetSuite host is unreachable. So basically, we've got an application down scenario, and very, very quickly, this tool can tell me that there's a configuration change. So what, what this is now is Network Configuration Manager integrating with Network Performance Monitor and providing me um, a reason for the configuration uh, problem. So if I click in the config change, It'll now drill into where the problem is in the configuration file. If I scroll down, I'm looking for a color change. There it is. So somebody has introduced an IP routing which is incorrect and uh, therefore um, has caused the application to go down. All we would need to do is uh, use Network Configuration Manager to restore the previous version of the configuration file and we should be back in business. Okay, so uh, we promised we'd look at the um, uh, the database side of things. So I'm going to jump into the database piece um, and have a look at the database summary. And uh, the database performance market is one that's really getting hot at the moment because a lot of organizations, of course, have hundreds of uh, database instances, maybe thousands of database instances. And we want to help you 
to uh, understand the performance of all of them as best we possibly can. So this is a database performance analyzer product. Um, it does have its own uh, console, but what it does is it sends the summary data up to the Orion platform as well. So in here we can see we've got our summary page again. And by the way, all the products are established in the same way or created in the same way. We have a summary page. You can drop down into the node page and the node might be an application, a server, a database, a network device. And then you can drop down further into the element pages and that, would, that might be an application component. It'll be a query on a database uh, or it'll be um, you know, a node on a, or sorry, a, a, a port on a switch, for example. Um, here you can see the databases we're supporting. We've got Sybase, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server. Um, we've got Postgres. We've got some uh, Azure managed services as well. And you can see the wait times, uh, the, the all instances with the highest wait times over here on the right hand side. Now, if I jump into the application itself, the database performance analyzer, um, I can go into this demonstration and show you what a DBA would look at and how they can help uh, understand the performance issue. So this data up here is what's being presented in summary format up on the Orion platform. Um, and what, as you can see, we have the same databases here uh, that we're monitoring within the demo site. And let me go into SQL Server database. And we've got some key indicators of uh, wait times, tuning, CPU, memory, disk, etc. And I can see that this one here, DPA SQL 2017, has got some issues in relation to tuning, and it's also got some memory and CPU issues. So I'm going to drill into the into that database. So now we're dropping from the the um, overview page or the summary page down into the node, which is the database itself. Um, I mentioned earlier on anomaly detection. So you can see here we have anomaly detection across a number of days. Um, I'm going to jump into the date of April 17th because we had a large anomaly. And now we can see uh, in a, on a day for a full day that the anomaly lasted for the entire day. If I jump into any one of those times, it'll now drive down into the queries that were running at that time on the database. And you can see that it's in, the, in descending order. So this query here, 519-936-729, um, basically once you hover over it, it'll show you the SQL text and so on. Um, but it's uh, this is where the query wait times were the highest. And I can see by the color coding that it's a memory CPU challenge uh, rather than anything else. You can even go further and drill into the query itself. And this is where the product will provide you with advisories. Um, it will give you some recommendations. You can outline the plan of the, of the, um, the query itself. Um, so DBAs love this type of stuff. Um, and you can also have a look at the memory CPU if you wish and so on. You get all the key statistics and you get table tuning advisories as well. So this is why DBAs love this product because it really helps them to drill right down into the specific queries that might have been causing problems for the application. Jumping back up, back up again, I just want to show you uh, one last thing, which is the virtualization manager. We talked about that. It's my favorite product, and I know Manny loves it as well. Um, and going into the virtualization summary page, we can now see all of the uh, virtual machines and uh, hosts that we're supporting. So we have our VMware environment, we have our vCenters, we have our Hyper-V, Nutanix is included as well. And you can drill down, of course, from your vCenter into your hosts, down into your clusters, uh, and right down into your individual virtual machines over here. One of the key features on Virtualization Manager is what we call recommendations. So this is, again, a bit of machine intelligence where the virtualization management software is analyzing the optimization of your environment. So this goes back to that optimization conversation we had uh, earlier on. So you can see we have a number of recommendations here. Let me just uh, zoom in slightly again. Um, we have this one here, the space utilization on this data store, vSAN data store has reached warning threshold. Uh, the recommendation is to move the VM JDRA demo from data store vSAN here to another one. So basically move a data store from one to another. And I can now execute that because we have the term manager in the product. So as Manya said, if there's a manager in the title, it allows you to um, access the management utilities without having to go to a third party product to do that. I can apply the recommendation. Uh, obviously in the demo, we don't do that because we want to we want to break things. But on the real world, it will go off and move that data store from one location to another. Um, you can also um, look at the uh, virtualization sprawl management, which is a key one as well. And this kind of shows you all the various things we can do from a management perspective, uh, be that changing CPU memory on a virtual machine. Uh, you can see here we can change CPU and memory sizes. Uh, we can um, delete data snapshots. We can power off a virtual machine if it's not being used for a period of time. 
Um, and of course, we can delete VMs, we can delete data stores again, uh, and so on. So you have full access to uh, optimizing all of your virtualization uh, environments. Um, if something goes wrong and there's an alert, basically it will go into the alert engines and alerts are a platform feature. So any product you plug into your Orion platform will have out of the box alerts and will automatically fire uh, alerts off if, if they breach thresholds and so on. But uh, one thing, let me just show you how an alert is uh, composed uh, very briefly. And uh, you can see then how we can send them off for incident management environments and so on. So this one here is a copy of a virtual machine with no heartbeat. And if I edit that alert, um, you will see at the front page, you have a description. You have the trigger conditions, which I know there's two triggers required here. One is that the heartbeat must be zero. And the second one is that the virtual machine must not be powered off. So you can see that the uh, child conditions have to be satisfied before the alert is created. And then of course you have trigger actions, which basically are responses. We talked about automation earlier on. How do I respond when this alert occurs? Um, as you can see, we have some actions already set up, but if I want to add another action, I can go in here and create a service now incident. I can create a solo and service desk incident. I can uh, pause the virtual machine. I can power it off, power it on again, reboot it, whatever the case might be from these action points here. So that's how we send um, the uh, incident into our service desk incident, and then we can manage the incident through that uh, as well. So, okay, so that's a very uh, quick fire kind of um, view of the um, demo site. And of course, as I said, anybody can jump on on that site and have a look around. So back to you, Rich. Yep, we have uh, run out of time actually for questions, folks. <laughs> so any questions that you have, go ahead and send them to us and I will get the answers out to you in the next few days. So I wanna thank Manya and John for presenting today. A great information, great insight into SolarWinds and what SolarWinds can do for any organization out there. So thank you both. Uh, with that being said, folks, with any questions that you have, go ahead and, and email us at info at flycastpartners.com. You can go online and chat with our IT experts uh, Monday through Friday from uh, 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Or you can call us at 844-FLYCAST. That's 844-359-2278. And uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to wish everyone a great rest of your week and stay safe out there until our next uh, meeting. Thank you, Rich. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you Rich, for having us. Have a great yeah. day, everybody. And thanks, everybody, for joining. Appreciate your time. Take care. Bye-bye.